Today's podcast is brought to you by Dell Expert Network. Dell's Partner Outreach Program is now available to Dell Expert Network members. One of Dell's Partner Outreach Managers can come out on-site and visit with you to demo the latest laptops and desktops, discuss any upcoming projects, make recommendations, and provide solutions to keep you and your customers on the cutting edge of technology. To learn more about the program, please visit www.dell.com forward slash outreach and mention Dell Expert Network in the Professional Association field as you fill out the registration. You're entering the MSP Zone, a podcast for the managed services community, covering news, analysis, and interviews from around the globe. Elevate your MSP game by staying in the MSP Zone. And now, your host, Charles Weaver. Avoiding burnout. What does that mean? Every profession has this threat, this uh, you know potential peril. Um, humans, individuals have burnout, you know, fatigue uh, occasionally. It, it happens to everybody. But we're talking about cybersecurity burnout, and I know it, 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 you may, at. At first blush, you may think, "What does that? What does that have to do? Is that relevant? Is it? Is it even happening?" Because some of you may be saying, "Well, no, we're we're not we're not having burnout. We're actually in the midst of a really aggressive push towards cybersecurity, and that's fine. Um, that's actually good. But I li- listen to the podcast, listen to this episode, and I I, I feel fairly confident that at the end it'll make sense." Because what we're what we're trying to promote here is balance, and what the the topic of today's episode and, and wrote an article about it um, about how to avoid cybersecurity burnout um, is directly relevant to MSPs and what MSPs are encountering and what customers are encountering. That's the critical thing. Um, because what MSPs and customers are encountering predominantly from the cybersecurity consultancy community, which is rapidly growing, more on that in, in a moment, um, that, that has the potential to create confusion, create chaos, create um, a, a lot of question around security, managed security, MSPs, all of that. Uh, and and the worst thing that the MSP profession could do is to fall into that trap and to and to do what other groups are doing, namely the cybersecurity consultants, and fall into a situation where they are um, not they themselves burning out. Right? That's not what burnout I'm talking about. I'm I'm talking about. Maybe fatigue. Maybe fatigue is a better way. Creating fatigue amongst the customers that they are speaking with, amongst the prospects they're working with to close managed services, and that that is what I am talking about because I'm I'm seeing it now, and uh, I'm we're actually going to write an article and and do a podcast on this very shortly, which is the. Def- the difference between managed security and security. And that that is a huge contributing factor to cybersecurity burnout and confusion. Um, and that's going to be a, another episode, another article we're going to talk about. But right now I'm going to just lay the groundwork um, for managed, managed security, managed services security, cybersecurity, and what MSPs might want to contemplate, might want to think about in order to avoid burnout or avoid fatigue, however you look at it, and to make the best of it moving forward. So let's just dive right in and, and get started. Um, what Just level set. I am not suggesting that we don't have a great amount of emphasis on security or that we ought not to take security seriously. Far from it. Security is incredibly important. It's increasingly more important every day. Um, MSPs that are light on security, who have not 
taken steps to beef up their own internal... First of all, as we have always said, and we will continue to say, whatever you do as an MSP, number one, if you don't offer managed security as a service, that's fine. Not every MSP needs to. Every MSP needs to have internal managed security focused internal, not external, focused internally as, as table stakes. No, no excuse for it. I don't care if you, if you do the least security focused thing on the planet. If you are a managed service provider defined by us, the MSP Alliance, as delivering a proactive IT managed service, then you need to have internal security defined as a managed, proactive IT security focused inward at your corporate or divisional level, whichever, probably both, um, as, as just it's the first thing that you, you are expected to have. There is no scenario in which that would be not called for. There's no situation on planet Earth that I can think of where a legitimate MSP should not have a very serious internal managed security, managed service security solution focused on internal operations, internal you know endpoints, users, all of that, backup, the whole nine yards. There's just no, there's no excuse for not doing it. So do it. Now you move to external services, the as a service offerings that you provide. The, the MSPs, particularly the smaller MSPs who have had customers who have been reluctant to embrace security, that is a ongoing battle and campaign that should and needs to be continued. What, what I'm suggesting here is that while you continue to improve internal security, while you continue to improve customer security to the best of your ability, knowing full well that the MSP does not control the decision of the customer, the customer has to own that responsibility. They cannot delegate that to anybody other than themselves. Um. That remains an ongoing legitimate focus of messaging, communication, education, awareness, and a little bit of friendly arm twisting by the MSP to get customers to embrace better security, managed security, and everything that goes along with that. So that is, I'm stating that for the record so that None of you comes back and says, wow, he's, he's saying that we should ease up on security. That's not what I'm saying here, folks. I'm saying the opposite. Having said what I just said, I now move on to messaging overkill. And I'm going to give you a great, it's an example that I'm going to use and focus on for the next article and podcast episode um, where I, I, I've been I've been spotting a trend where it is I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing companies that at first glance don't appear to be an MSP. They appear to be a cybersecurity consulting firm. And I I talked about that in in a, f- a few episodes ago I talked about that where we're seeing overt uh, increasing number of cybersecurity consulting firms who are not demonstrably not providing any managed services. But they are out there saying things that a lot of MSPs are saying. And the similarity of, of what of the messaging comes in the security, right? So it would be around security consulting, the obvious ones, but maybe some compliance stuff, right? Which a lot of MSPs do, compliance work. 
And these cyber consulting firms are also claiming to be consulting compliance experts. Maybe, maybe not. I, I tend to think not. Um, and they're, they're showing up in increasing numbers. Now, I just came across a, a company that, uh, again, my first my first instinct was this is not an MSP. Somebody else who I trust um, identified this company as an MSSP, and I, and I looked them up and I said, well, are they really an MSP? No, they're, they're not an MSP. And then I started, because all their language on the website was just overtly, unambiguously security. That's all they were talking about. Their penetration testing, they were talking about, uh, actually, I don't know if they were talking about penetration testing. They were talking about, um, here, I'm going to pull them up. I'm not going to give you who these who these folks are because I don't want to make them any any more. Um, I don't I don't want to you know put put emphasis on them. Security and network assessment, ethical hacking, um, different security assessments. So I mean that's the first thing. So anytime I see that, especially when you start to get into security assessments that might lead into vulnerability, um, te- you know, penetration testing, things like that, th- there, there tends to be, there needs to be a distinction between a one-time review and assessment that, an, for example, an MSP might do and the ongoing work where, generally speaking, we don't we, we have a best practice in managed services where we don't like to see the MSP doing the review of their own work, right? Uh, for obvious reasons, that should, should make sense to everybody. But this company, you know, I was, I was looking at them and I said, okay, this, this looks like a typical security consulting firm. But then I started to look deeper and then they had things like network operations centers, a knock. So why why would a consulting firm have a knock? Well, that's that's interesting. And then I looked further, and then wow, they're they're doing endpoint detection, endpoint um, management. So they are actually managing devices. Yeah, they are. Um, and then they looked further, and then they they had buried, and I'll I'll say this: it was really buried into their company. Like it wasn't available on the first page, like I'm typical typically used to seeing. Um, it was buried deep into their service offerings, and then there I saw it: managed services, and they call themselves a, a provider of managed services there, but I had to really look for it. And again, I'm a I'm a 22 year student of the managed services profession. I'm pretty good at spotting MSPs. I'm pretty good at spotting you know not non MSPs who pretend to be MSPs, but they're not really. And I thought that this was a non MSP at first glance. So if it's difficult for me, what's the average customer gonna be like? What what are they gonna what are they going to um, say? Are they going to say, hey, this is not an MSP. This looks like a consultant. And that, that's, a, that's a serious issue. That's a serious issue because a customer needs to know, who am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a one-off provider of consulting services? Or am I dealing with a real legitimate proactive provider of managed services? They got to know. And there are situations where the MSP does both. But the good MSPs, as we all know, lead first with the managed services and secondarily offer consulting and project work to their managed services customers. The, the more reactive companies lead first with the projects, lead first with the one-off items, hardware, software, services, and then 
and then later on hope to sell and secure a managed services contract. But most MSPs do it exactly the opposite. But back to this. It, it, this, this company created confusion. And, and that gets to the burnout or the fatigue or, or, the, or the, the clarity issue, which I, I'm, 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 t- I'm telling you, you know, the MSPs that are out there listening to this, you know, be, be aware of how your messaging is having an impact or be aware of the impact your messaging has on customers and prospective customers. Because if these types of, let's call them an MSP, are out there, calling themselves leading, shall we say, leading with the cybersecurity message. In this particular case study, it had the impact, the very real impact of fooling, you know, a a somewhat knowledgeable person in the managed services spot profession uh, of, of confusing me. I had really had to dig, really had to find where they do managed services. And if it and if it fools me, it's. More than likely, it's probably highly likely that it's fooling customers as well. Now, why does it matter? Well, it, it, why does fooling anyone matter? It, it matters a great deal because, number one, if, if, if confusion is a byproduct of your messaging, then I'm sorry, you're, you're, we are failing, Right? I don't want to say you are failing. We as a profession are failing. That, is, that should be the last thing that we create amongst the consumer population, and that is confusion. We want the opposite. We want clarity. We want crystal clear communication, unambiguous communication. This is what we do. This is not what we do. This is the only thing we do. This is predominantly the only thing we do. We do some other things, but this is the thing that we do the most. Those are all outcomes of a very clear messaging. I don't think that that's what's happening, folks. I think that the opposite's happening. I think the opposite thing happening is we've got so many different MSPs that are out there flailing about trying to be relevant in security trying desperately because they came back from a conference and the conference told them you got to be you got to be calling yourself an MSSP you're not a real MSP unless you're an MSSP i get the pressure you're under i understand the pressure you're under the peer pressure the vendor pressure Hear me, what was that? Hear me now, listen to me later. What was that uh, from Saturday Night Live? Um, you you got to be aware of what these changes in your messaging and your website articulation are having. Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be promoting your security services. I'm not saying that at all. But just be be careful about how it is being received because the other aspect of this that we're going to talk about in the future we're going to continue talking about it is the impact of the of the consultant class the non-managed services cyber and security consulting industry which is booming they're they're coming out of all corners doing all sorts of you know, broad spectrum and very targeted messaging, advertising, promotion of their services, some good, some really, really bad. And they're bleeding over into the areas that you, the legitimate MSP class, are occupying. That's the confusion that I'm trying to warn against. That's what I'm trying to avoid because that overlap, that that creep of the 
the non-managed services consultant bleeding over into the area of managed services does not, it already exists and we need to address that. What we don't want to do is make it worse by having legitimate MSPs confound and confuse their customers by saying, are we really an MSP? Let's bury the fact that we're an MSP. Let's make it really difficult to the customers and and make them only see our security offering, our security interest, which, yeah, maybe I get it. Maybe I get it. Maybe maybe you've you've you know you've had enough of of um, I don't know. Maybe you think that being an MSP is is um, you know yesterday's news. I don't know. But let me tell you something. It's regardless of what you call yourself, you have to have a very clear articulation of what you do and how you describe what you do to others. Because you're not doing yourself any favors by calling yourself something other than what you actually do. And that's going to come as a stark reality check. When in whether it's an audit, whether it's a examination certification, or whether it's a official compliance governance oversight, you know, review. MSPs need to be MSPs. Non-MSPs need to be non-MSPs. And any confusion or overlap between those two camps is not a good thing. So you don't want to be an MSP anymore. You want to be a straight-up consultant? Do it. But don't expect to have any of the same benefits and business model perks that being an MSP brought you. And, and similarly, you no longer occupy, you can do other things maybe that the MSP couldn't do. Not a lot, but, but some things. But you, you, you shouldn't be in the same position that you were as an MSP. And if you're a non-MSP and you're out on the cyber world or in the security consulting world, then be, be over there. But don't expect to be in the same position and enjoy the same trusted advisor, you know, status that the MSPs have had, because that certainly does not attend or associate itself with with that business model, the consulting business model. Just be aware, folks. That's what I'm talking about. I'm seeing, I'm seeing this as a trend. I'm throwing the flag out there. I'm calling this as a, as a play on the field. It's an issue. It's it's an it's an it's an issue that's been going on. It's accelerating, and we don't on the MSP side don't need to add to that confusion. So, to the extent that you can be self aware of your own services, what you deliver, how you communicate that to customers, be aware of it. Maybe take a quick review. See what your your website marketing and email marketing and social marketing are looking like. And just maybe just do a quick review because I'm seeing a greater and greater confusion over who is doing managed services and who isn't. And if, if, that's, if that's what I'm seeing, I guarantee you, that's not going to be helping your customers at all. That will create greater confusion for them and greater confusion for them is never a good thing. Until next time. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us a like. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast so you will get notified when future episodes are released. We will see you next time in the MSP Zone.